it's been about almost a month today since uh, we actually did the, the live egg planting uh, in our stream here in Oklahoma. And uh, I've got a couple of boxes that I just planted at the same time in, in the little spring creek right at the house here. And what I want to do is I am reasonably for sure that the boxes have hatched and I want to try to, to recover a box and we'll be see if we can see some either uh, sack fry or some swim up, swim up fry. I, I, I have a feeling there's going to be quite a number of them here. So uh, lift it out. Bring it over here and set it down. Uh, you can see the, there's some little scuds uh, swimming around here. This this little spring creek's full of crud and, and oh oh look look <laughs> wow there's a baby see he just popped out of the box look at that it's a little a little swim up fry wow yay good deal let me cut this off man I, I'm just as nervous as I can be pull this out. And let's just put some water in there and see what we got. That whole bottom is full of swim up, swim up fry. The whole single bottom. Can you see it? Isn't that neat? Okay, I'm going to open this box up now and get the fry out. Now, see, there's where the eggs were. See, they're all gone. So there's no eggs in there which means we had a great hatch and a little fewer any of them died now I'm going to open this up and pour this fry out in here and that may be shocking but there they are now they're going to be getting out of this box probably they're already starting out but in the next uh, probably in the next three days to a week most of these guys will be like that they'll be up in the surface and swimming but Look at that, every one of them practically is alive. So, and that's the way the system works. From uh, trout eggs to, to the Whitlock Vibrant Box, plant the seeds in the right spot, and this is what you get. These little fry like this. Now they got a long way to go, but what the box has done is this it's hatched the eggs properly without anything being able to eat them it's held the fry without anything being able to eat them until they matured and now they're escaping the box and the box's job is done and from that point on these fish have to make it on their own but but you can see how many of these practically every egg that was in this box turned into a fry So what is a Whitlock Vibrant Box? Primarily, it's an in-stream, under-the-gravel incubator and nursery system for trout eggs, or salamoidoids, which include trout, char, and salmon. And it allows you to take approximately 250 to 500 eggs and plant them in the stream uh, and let them naturally incubate there, hatch and enter the stream as, as swim up fry and create essentially a native fishery in that stream rather than a put and take fishery. Because normally if a trout is going to become a native resident of the stream, if it's born at wild in the gravel, it has its best opportunity to do that. And the reasons for uh, the Whitlock Vibrant Box, and, and I've just got a little list here of them. The primary one as far as is my opinion, is to establish where there is not a wild a trout fishery. And what I mean by wild trout fishery, I mean a species of trout that lives in the stream and is self-sustaining, that it maintains its population through natural reproduction. It's not necessarily a trout that, that evolved in the stream 
being but a, a trout that you introduce that actually takes on the stream as its year-round habitat and reproduces in that stream. We have found that if we obtain a good quality of eggs, uh, we really have a, a terrific opportunity, a very high percentage opportunity to establish the, these populations. The next thing is that there are a lot of times, and I, I, would, I guess I was really guilty of this more, as much as anybody, is that, that I have always loved variety in nature. And in the fly fishing world, particularly trout, we have brown trout, rainbow trout, cutthroat trout, brook trout, etc. And I've always loved streams where there were more than one species in there. And so it's a good way to introduce a second or third species uh, into a stream with the right permission so that you don't create some kind of a habitat or, or pr predatory problem on the, on the existing uh, population. Uh, introducing a new species, a very uh, high percentage way of success is using the Whitlock Vibrant Box. The Vibrant Box, as well as the Whitlock Vibrant Box, essentially operates by retaining trout eggs. Trout eggs run from approximately three millimeters to seven millimeters, depending on the species of trout and salmon and char. These little round eggs uh, are retained in the box by restrictive uh, slots. These little small slot holes are smaller than the egg is round, and so the egg can't pass through them. But once the trout hatches, or the egg hatches, the little fry is no longer round, and so it can pass through the slot. And that allows it to exit the incubator section and or the nursery section. Trout and salmon eggs, when they are first taken from the parents and fertilized, they're in a green situation, and those eggs are relatively resilient for about 24 hours. But after that, until they're eyed out or they have little baby trout inside the egg, really can't be disturbed. Well, the Whitlock Vibrant Box takes these eyed eggs, and you, you put the eggs in the box and put them in the gravel, and they hatch there to produce the trout. So it's essentially a, an incubator and, and nursery system that utilizes eyed trout eggs that you obtain either from a hatchery or from a natural source and implant them in the stream. Site selection is extremely important in the success of, of implanting these boxes. And site selection is what part of the stream works best. Uh, usually when trout have a choice, they will select a particular area of the stream that's most inducive to the eggs. First of all, let's start off with the parts of the stream so you'll understand where the site is. That in a normal trout stream gradient, you have about four different areas. You have, first of all, the riffle. Riffle is a fairly shallow, fast-moving, uh, noisy, rocky little area. And then the riffle goes into the run. And then the run, the water starts to slow down a little bit and deepen, and then you go into the pool, which is the wider, deeper, slowest section of the stream. And then the pool gradually comes up into a shallower area called a tail or uh, the lip of the pool. And then it goes into the next riffle. So you have riffle, run, pool, tail. Trout normally select the tail of the pool to do to build their nest and spawn. If they don't have a sufficient tail, they next select uh, a shallow section of the riffle that's available. Uh, but so the first position is the tail. The second position is the riffle below the tail. Just about to wind this up now, let me just address a couple of other things quickly. First of all, the choice of water. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the introduction, probably the best choice of water for small individual groups or private folks are the, the water that's closest to your property, the closest to your home, the closest to where you, you regularly fish. In other words, so you can have a faster, closer uh, contact with that water. So those are basically local waters rather than somewhere on the other side of the country. The next thing is, that uh, understand that that water or what kind of management it's under. Is it under an extremely 
heavy put and take program? Is it under uh, all some kind of a pollution threat? Is it uh, is it a tailwater and the water varying a lot in, in, in height and quality? So really understand that and the laws of that management so that you don't go against that. And you, 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 can, you can coordinate your efforts to fit in with that rather than opposing it or getting into trouble with it. Uh, and the next thing is that if, again, your, your intention is to create a natural reproducing wild trout fishery, that would be a miracle to do it in one year. Usually, I would recommend a minimum of three years of implantations. And so you go through a three-year period, and then as it progresses into the fourth year, you will begin to see the results of productions of adult fish. And at that point, it appears to be unsuccessful. It may well be unsuccessful, but you cannot judge that with one year. It's at the, all of the different uh, scenarios that can happen to those fish and those eggs and what have you, uh, you just, you, you've got to give them more chances than that. In fact, if I were really recommending uh, I would say a, a, a minimum of five-year program of actually working with eggs for five years. Uh, that may seem like a long time, but it goes very fast. I'll tell you this, it's a very enjoyable process, and you'll find that it, that it really does uh, bring a lot of folks closer together. You have a sense of pride and self-satisfaction with this program that you don't get depending on, on somebody else to stock a river or or waiting for the trout to do all the work themselves, and so it, it's a really uh, self-enriching thing that you, you that whether it's a total success or total failure, you will really be a lot better person and understand your sport and appreciation of the treasure of trout is if you involved with it. Next, we're going to take you through step by step the processes that you'll need to know to develop a successful Whitlock vibrant box program.